Hello, welcome, thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to be teaching on something that I, I, I believe everyone goes through and everyone asks these questions. And these questions are the following. Have you ever thought or have you ever asked, God, what is happening? What are you doing to me? God, why do you do this to me? Why are these things happening to me? I'm sure, like me, you have asked these questions. So stick with me to find out the answers to these questions. But you need to watch until the end to get the whole picture of what we're talking about and to get the answers to these very important questions that we often have in our relationship and in our walk with Yahweh. Now when looking at the lives of the people in the Bible, one quickly sees that they are people just like you and me. Sometimes we get this mindset and we elevate these Bible characters up there and we put them on the pedestal and they're great men and women and, and they have faith and nothing can stop them. And while this is true, we also need to understand that, friends, these people are just normal, everyday people like you and I. They are no different. They have emotions. They have fears. They have excitements. They have downtime. And they have all these emotions that you and I all live with today. They were no different, these great men and women in our Bibles. They had faults, just like we do. Even those who were closest to God had these faults, like Moshe, Moses, and King David. And his faults were, were known, but yet he was still close to God. Moshe missed out on going to the promised land because of disobedience. He disobeyed. Yet, he was known as a friend of God. He had a relationship that was really close to Yahweh. I want to look today at Joseph's life. Now, for the very early parts of his life, Joseph had a very difficult life. I mean, think about this. His own mother died when he was very young. He was favoured by his father, Jacob, because he was the firstborn of the one he loved, who was Rachel. He was given a special tunic that set him apart from his brothers, which caused a great jealousy and caused his brothers to be envious of him because of this tunic showed the, fa uh, the favour of the father and it set him apart and they were envious. Joseph was also given two dreams by Yahweh which revealed that he would be ruler over his brothers and over his whole household, his mother and his father. And this brought a rebuke from his father Jacob when Joseph was sharing these dreams with them. And his brothers even hated him even more and envied him even more because of these dreams. I mean, Joseph must have felt very alone at times within his own household. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever experienced times where you've just felt so alone within your own family, let alone at your workplace or with, uh, among your own friends and colleagues, have you ever felt alone among your own? And he, and he was sent out by Jacob, his father, to check up on his brothers who were pastoring the father's flocks. They ended up in a place called Dothan, just up past Shechem. Upon seeing Joseph coming, his brothers plotted to kill him. I mean, this is how anger and jealousy and envy festered within their own hearts. They actually plotted to kill him as they hated him and wanted him out of the way. So these dreams he had would not come to pass. Reuben, 
the other firstborn, interceded and the plan was changed. And they ended up putting him in a pit. Now let's just pause here for a moment. There's more going on in all these stories that we read about in scriptures. For example, put yourself in Joseph's shoes right now while he was being cast and thrown into a pit, put there by his own brothers. What would you be thinking and feeling? What would your attitudes be? What would you be trying to figure out? How am I going to get out of this situation that I'm in? What would your heart be and your attitude be towards your brothers? And think on these things and others and you'll find that the Bible will just start to become real and alive. Joseph is then sold off and he joins a caravan not knowing what was going to happen. He didn't have a clue where he was going and what he was doing. Now keep this in mind, he was just 17 years old. Think about what you were doing when you were 17. What your life was like. He ends up in Egypt. And then he's sold off again to the chief officer in the court of Pharaoh. So now he's been cast into a pit. He's been sold off twice. And he ends up in a foreign land in the court of an official of Pharaoh. But Yahweh is with him all the time. He has been given favour by another father, of course being Yahweh, and elevated to run the whole house of Potiphar. The whole house, his whole affairs, Joseph was elevated by the hand of Yahweh, by the favour of Yahweh to rule everything under Potiphar's hand. The only thing he had nothing over was Potiphar's wife. But then she lied. And Joseph ended up in prison. While in prison, Joseph was again given favour by Yahweh. And he had and looked after all the other prisoners. They were put under his hand. Again, revealed the the hand of Yahweh and and, and the favour of Yahweh on Joseph's life, even when he was in prison. Pharaoh's cupbearer and baker ended up in the same prison. They both had dreams. And Yahweh used Joseph to interpret those dreams. From there, Pharaoh had two dreams. And none in the land could interpret or tell Pharaoh the meaning of the dreams that he had. But Pharaoh was told by the cupbearer about his own experience, his own testimony that he had with Joseph. Upon hearing that testimony, Pharaoh sent for Joseph, who again Yahweh used him to interpret and give the meanings of these dreams to Pharaoh. And he also, not only that, gave counsel on how to proceed forward, and how to move forward, and how to direct Egypt through the time that was coming. He was elevated by Pharaoh to second in command of the whole land of Egypt, with Pharaoh being the only one above him. Very similar to Potiphar's house. He was elevated to rule and reign over all Potiphar's affairs. And the same thing we find happening here. Through Joseph's life, there were many trials and tribulations. He ended up as an instrument in Yahweh's hand to literally save his household, the household of Israel. The very brothers that betrayed him, lied about him, and sold him off. Remember this whole time, he did not know that Jacob, his father, 
you thought that he was dead. He didn't know this. How could he have known that his own father thought that he was dead this whole time? Now some things I want to bring out about Joseph. He experienced two pits, if you like. The one being in the desert and the other one being in the prison house. Now I want to highlight a chain of events that took place simply because of Joseph's attitude and his perspective. Now again, put yourself in Joseph's shoes. How would you feel being put in prison on false charges, on a false testimony? How would you feel about that? He did nothing wrong. Would you be all self-loathing, angry, bitter, not really caring about anyone else? Well, look at Joseph. He saw the countenance of the cupbearer and the baker and saw that they were sad. He asked them why they were sad. This started a chain of events. That led to Joseph being the second in command of all Egypt and saved his own family. Just because, now get this, just because he cared for someone else. He was given an opportunity to bless somebody, to minister to somebody, to help somebody. He wasn't staring down at his own belly button saying, oh, woe is me. How hard done by am I? No, he saw someone else that was sad. He noticed someone else's countenance that was downcast. And he ministered to them. And by just that simple act of kindness, the fuse was lit in Yahweh's eyes. Friends, there is a powerful message here. He was in the same situation and yet he was able to have a different attitude and a different perspective and minister to some other men that set off a whole chain reaction of events that ended up with him being second in command of Egypt. Have a look at this verse with me. Psalm 37 verses 23 and 24. It says, The steps of a good man are ordered by Yahweh, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for Yahweh upholds him with his hand. Now, it is well after these events when Joseph was reunited with his brothers, and they were very afraid because of what they had done. And Joseph was able to say, everything that I went through was by the hand of Yahweh, was by the hand of God. That God sent him there to preserve the whole nation, to preserve the whole people, to preserve the whole household of Israel. His steps were ordered by Yahweh. His steps were established by Yahweh. Psalm 40, verse 2. And he also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my steps. So here we have these two Psalms. Psalm 37, 23 and Psalm 40, verse 2. The words ordered and established is exactly the same Hebrew word, which is kun. So Yahweh ordered and established his steps. If you're a believer in Yahweh, Yahweh orders your steps. Proverbs 16 verse 9. A man's heart plans his way. But Yahweh directs his steps. 
Now, I don't know about you, but I guess Joseph had plans in his heart, especially after being given the dreams he had. He would have been thinking and meditating and, well, where's my life going to end up and how's this all going to work out? Yahweh ordered his steps. The outcomes of the dreams he had manifested in his life. They come to pass. But I am sure Joseph did not think that the journey he was on at that time were going to lead to the life he found himself living out. Think about that for a moment. He had these dreams that he was going to be head of his household and that they were all going to bow down to him. And I am certain that he never thought that the path that he took was going to be the way how that played out. Proverbs 19.21 There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, Yahweh's counsel, that will stand. What is Yahweh's counsel? It is his Torah. It is his word. That's his counsel. And that's what will stand. Proverbs 20.24 A man's steps are of Yahweh. How then can a man understand his own way? I mean, this verse just could sum up Joseph's life. How could Joseph have understood the path that he took? How could he have ever understood why these things happened to him the way they did? How could he understand the way that he was on? But ultimately, his steps were ordered by Yahweh. Psalm 147 verse 11. Yahweh takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his mercy. Joseph experienced Yahweh's favour many times. We see that he really does not do that much wrong. Joseph didn't do that much wrong. His brothers were jealous and he was envied by them. He had a false witness and testimony given against him by Potiphar's wife. And through it all, from what we read in the scriptures, he maintained his, he maintained his integrity and showed compassion and concern for others. Proverbs 11.20 those who are of a perverse heart are an abomination to Yahweh, but the blameless in their ways are his delight. Now his brothers at that time, when they did what they did, friends, they had a perverse heart. They wanted to kill him. They took him out of the way. They lied, they schemed, they planned. They did everything in a perverse heart. And Joseph seen through all this seemed to be blameless. He didn't really do that much wrong. And yet these things kept happening to him. But guess what? His steps were ordered by Yahweh. Friends, we have all been put in pits from time to time. Some pits that we find ourselves in are by our own doings by things that we said, by things that we did, by the behaviours that we lived out. But other pits that we find ourselves in are by the hands of others, totally out of our control. Nothing that we did, but we were put into those pits anyway. Let this be an encouragement to you. You may be at a point in your life right now, and I know, that some of you are, that your life has not played out the way you had planned. You may have had dreams that are yet to be fulfilled. Many people's stories in the Bible are very similar. Look at Moshe's life. If you are in a pit right now, or you feel like you're trapped, be encouraged by this message. Yahweh loves you and he has a plan for your life. 
Ask the Holy Spirit to change your perspective, to change your attitude, to change your outlook in the situation that you're in. If you are a follower of Yahweh, friends, my Bible says that your steps are ordered by Him. Friends, your life can change in an instant, literally from one day to the next. This is all through our Bibles where people's lives were changed like that. Joseph was changed positively and negatively many times. He went to check on his brothers in Dothan and that, that morning he set out. Literally the, that afternoon when he found them, his life had changed. He was cast into a pit and then he was sold off to, to Midianites and Ishmaelites and found himself enslaved and being dragged along in a caravan. And then he was sold off again to Potiphar's house and then elevated and then put in prison. And then he was brought out and interpreted Pharaoh's dreams and made second in command. Friends, your life can change in a matter of moments. I just encourage you, don't let go. Just don't let go. Your life could change tomorrow, next week, or next month, or next year. But friends, your steps are ordered by Yahweh. He knows what he's doing. He might have a, a massive, big purpose and plan for you. Just don't let go. Don't give up. Don't lose heart. Don't lose faith. Hold on to him. We read earlier, and I'll bring it up again, and I'll finish on this. Again in Psalm 37, verses 23 to 24. The steps of a good man or woman are ordered by Yahweh, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For Yahweh upholds him with his hand. Friend, Yahweh will uphold you with his hand. Hold on to him. Don't let go. Ask the Holy Spirit for help and guidance. God loves you. And he has a plan for your life. Remember, things can change very quickly. He just might want to be teaching you a lesson. He might want to be building faith in you. Just don't let go. And I like this statement. Dear God, I may not understand why everything is happening in my life right now, but I just wanted to say that I trust you and love you. Amen. You may not understand why your, why your life is where it is right now. You may, may say, God, what's happening to me? Why are you allowing this to take place? This is not how I thought it would happen. Again, friends, your steps are ordered by Yahweh. You just do not know what's in your future. But I know this, that all things work out for good to those who love Yahweh and are called according to his purpose. Well, Father, we thank you that we can just simply hold on to you. Father, that we may not understand why you allow things to happen to us. We, we might not understand why we are where we are right now in our lives. But Father, help us to change our heart. Help us to change our perspective. Help us to change our outlook by your Holy Spirit. Father, that we would hold on to you and never, ever let go. That our steps are ordered by you. They are established by you for your goodwill and pleasure. That your ways are not our ways. Your thoughts are not our thoughts. Father, help us to simply hold on to you and trust you and never, ever let go. 
and that our steps are ordered and established by you and that you are in complete control and that we can rest and have peace in you. In Yeshua's name, amen. Well, I really hope and pray that this has been an encouragement to you. That you remember that your steps are ordered by Yahweh. So that being said, may Yahweh watch over you. May he protect you. And may he bless you and your loved ones. So until next time, blessings and shalom. Thank you for watching. We pray that this teaching has been a blessing to you. For more information, please go to www.ancientfoundationbiblefellowship.com. Shalom.